So welcome to our core USB driver installation video. I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of quickly go over how to properly connect a cord device to a computer, in this case, a PC. So the first thing to note is do not connect your cord device to start. Instead, download the USB driver from cord.com and install the software. So this is the USB driver software first then connect the cord device. Then you would run the install core USB MIDI device app, verify with the uninstall core USB MIDI device app. And we do suggest downloading the editor librarian because it's a great way to verify if the computer and the cord device are working. It also helps with workflow. And finally, if you're gonna use a, a DAW like Cubase, Ableton, Pro Tools, uh, the best thing to do is to, uh, well, you have to actually go to the options preferences menu. It's, it might be under different names. And uh, you will have to select your core product or activate your core product in order for the DAW and the core product to see one another and to work together. So um, first thing is to, of course, download the USB driver from core.com, click on support. Click on Downloads, and click on the Cord USB MIDI driver. It doesn't matter what product you have. Clicking on this uh, link will send you to the latest USB MIDI driver. It works for all products. Um, you have different systems, of course, if you're Mac-based or Windows-based. Make sure you download the appropriate driver for your system. If you're not sure, you can left click on my or, or this PC uh, and then right click on this PC again in this window and properties and you will actually see the system information. In this case, it's Windows 10 and 64-bit operating system. You'll double click on the EXE file. I'll just bring my download folder over. Here's my download folder. Uh, it's an EXE file called Driver, Driver Tools. It's in your download um, folder. Uh, and once you've installed the app, sorry, let's go back. Sorry about that. Once you've installed uh, the app, there's two apps that are really, really important. Uh, once you've installed the software, I should say, there's two important apps. One is the MIDI. Uh, Korg MIDI driver setup utility, and the other one is the Korg MIDI driver uninstall utility. Uh, I've highlighted them here as favorites, so the install and uninstall essentially. Korg device, now that you've installed the, um, the drivers, and let Windows install its generic driver. Now, if you've already connected the USB cable before this, you will need to watch our troubleshooting video as well. Now, even though Windows has installed a generic driver, it's not over yet. You actually have to run the Cord MIDI driver setup, the install MIDI driver. And in this case, we're installing an MS-20. You would go install, or highlight the MS-20, install, this will list and show up properly here. What I like to do is run the cord uninstall USB device utility just to make sure everything's fine. So in this case, we're continuing our MS-20 install. We can see that the MS-20 is in fact showing properly as Korg MS-20 controller and it is connected. So this device is ready to, to go. It's no problem if let's say your device is showing up in MIDI 5 or wherever else. It might not look exactly like this, but as long as you see one listing of your product and connected, you're good to go. At this point, could cancel because we were just using the uninstall. We don't want to install it, of course. We're just using this as a verification. Now, if your uninstall doesn't look the same, um, because not because you, it's just a different place, it's because you have multiple instances or you have a whole bunch of stuff going on, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of troubleshooting and you're going to have to watch our troubleshooting video. Uh, certainly, if you see multiple instances, like in this example where we have three instances of the mini log, this is a problem. This means this has not been installed properly. It means that somebody's tried to plug it in several times, maybe different ports, and this is what's caused the problem. 
Uh, as we mentioned, the down, you know, you should download it at the editor library that goes with your product. Um, you can, of course, visit the download section as we outlined at the top of the tutorial. Um, the editors are really great. I mean, they really, really do uh, improve your workflow. Uh, it's much easier to work off of the mouse and a bigger screen than sometimes some of the smaller form factors of these products. Um, the first time that you install the uh, uh, editor librarian, once you install it and open it, some of them automatically detect the, um, the Korg product. In this case, let me just open the SV1 really fast for you. Uh, there isn't any place to set up or go to a MIDI preferences. You have to have really set up the SV1 correctly. So uh, it's just taking a moment here. It's connecting, it's going to see it, and you can see that it's working, no problem. There isn't an options anywhere where you can set up the MIDI in and out. So with the SV1 as other editors, it either works or it doesn't, and again, because you've set up the driver correctly. So if your software uh, has a preferences, so uh, if the editor librarian has a preferences with MIDI ports, in, you might have to set this up manually. Um, so if you do, again, go to the preferences menu. Uh, if you don't see your, your device listed properly, like in this case, we know it's a nano control, it's listed properly. If you don't see it listed properly, you're going to have to go back to the troubleshooting video. Now, you want to get your uh, Korg devices to integrate in your DAW, in this case, Ableton. Um, you will have to go to the options preference menu. Uh, in your DAW. We can't possibly know how to run every single DAW. I'm just using Ableton as an example because I'm an Ableton user. Um, you should really contact the product specialist for that DAW if you're not sure. But basically, as an overview, you can see now in Ableton that the SV1, Control 49, and Pad Control are all set up to be controllers. So this is where track is set to on. And they do list properly, as you can see. I know the drivers have all been put in properly. Uh, additionally, port B for the Control 49 and both ports for the pad control have been set up for remote. Um, this is because I do find that uh, the court Control 49 is perfectly set up, of course, with the sliders and knobs for, uh, for, for mixing. And uh, the pad control works really well for um, turning on and off clips, loops, as they, or clips as they call it in Ableton works really, really well for that. Now, you'll notice that I don't have anything synced, like let's say a drum machine, but if you were to need to, to sync uh, a Korg device, you would have to turn on sync, and you would have to go to that Korg device and actually set it up to external clock. Uh, you may not be done yet. Uh, at that point, you might still find things are, are communicating. You see some MIDI flashing um, in your DAW, but nothing's happening. That might be because you have to MIDI learn uh, the different sliders and knobs. So in this case, I showed an example again of Ableton where MIDI uh, Learn was turned on, and then basically you've got the sliders here where I click on a slider and you move a slider on the Control 49, and then the CC, in this case, I think it's CC7, pops up, and you can set up the control of that. Um, I also showed a, a nice uh, snapshot of the Control 49 editor because, as I mentioned, it really helps with workflow. When you download the editor for the Control 49, um, you can get all these scenes, in this case, uh, scenes for virtual instruments, as well as a scene for my DAW. So I downloaded all these into the different scenes using the editor, and then it just works. Switching from one scene to the next in my Control 49 just works really, really well. And of course, I do have a live scene because I am using Ableton. So again, just to uh, recap, best thing is not to install not to connect the Korg device to start with, download the USB driver from Korg.com, install that driver, then connect the Korg device. Then you run the Korg install USB MIDI device app. It should be listed as your product model number. Install it. Verify it with the Korg uninstall MIDI device app. Don't uninstall it, of course, just verify it. Download the editor librarian uh, from Korg.com. It's a great way to uh, uh, increase your workflow.
and the QWERTY device are communicating. And finally, when you open your DAW, uh, you may have to go to an options preference menu and select the cord devices or turn them on in order for them to work. So I trust this helps for everybody uh, watching this and uh, good luck with hooking up your cord product to your computer.